to have more people enjoying this this amazing webinar. And I'm sharing with Alton, so I'll be sharing again. Okay, Melissa. All right, here we go. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, it is a pleasure for us to have you here today. Um, today we're going to share this space that is built for you and by members of our academic field. Um, teacher James Forero is joining us today. He's an experienced teacher, a trainer, a trainer and consultant. His experience includes teacher professional development coaching at all levels, large scale educational projects and language English instruction at several universities. His main interests are immersion environment development, pedagogical coaching and fostering critical thinking skills. For our webinar today, I'm going to uh, read the abstract that uh, Professor Ferrero shared with us. And I hope you enjoy this, this webinar. So the abstract says this. As educators gradually come back in the classroom, the entire academic community wonders where this all is going to end up. What does a renewed version of the classroom look like? How will instructional design evolve? Are we going back to where we are coming from? Just like the epic hero comes back home at the end of the story, the average educator comes back to a reality they long for after a journey filled with hazards. Is this the end of the story after all? We are uh, going to invite Professor James in this moment. Sorry. Good afternoon, Adriana. Good afternoon, everyone. Hey, James. Welcome, thank you for accepting our invitation um, and for sharing your thoughts with us. We're looking forward to it. And everybody, please remember that the chat is there for you to be active. We will be talking and, in, and interacti interacting through it. And welcome, and the floor is yours. All right, first of all, thank you very much for having me in. Um, I'm really uh, pleased to be here when I, when I got to know I was gonna be here, I said, okay, absolutely. But when they told me it was just an hour, I said, oh my God, then I freaked out. <laughs> and then I'll try to make the best out of your time and my time as well, all right? So let's, first of all, let me allow me to uh, share my presentation with you, all right? And then in the chat box, you will find 
a link which we will be using within a moment. All right. Um, the title I decided to call this presentation or this experience with you back to the classroom is, is status quo. Uh, understanding status quo uh, things as things as they originally are. Our narrative or our context is going to be movies because I am personally a movie lover. I love going to the movies. I love enjoying every single kinds of movies, independent movies, you name it. Uh, so uh, I do believe uh, in the power of arts uh, as, as, a, as an agent of transformation. And I do believe uh, movies are aesthetic experience that can change people's minds. So. Saying that, uh, well, this is the, the abstract Adriana was kindly reading a moment ago. Um, basically, uh, it tells us where we're going today, all right? Um, in the movie of coronavirus, <laughs> which seems to be like a horror movie, okay, where is this all taking us and where are we all going and as educators? But first of all, I would like to know a little bit about how you feel, all right, and how you have face this journey. So if you click on the link I just shared on uh, in the chat box, you will be directed to Mentimeter, or even if you use your cell phone to scan the QR code on screen, you will get there to the Mentimeter, um, to the Mentimeter uh, I've prepared for you. So let's just take a moment while everybody gets tuned in with the Mentimeter. And then remember in the chat box, you'll find the link to the Mentimeter survey. So meanwhile, Adriana, are you with us? Yes, here I am. Tell us your story with coronavirus. How was it? The, how was the transition for you? Um, it, it is more like a roller coaster, you know, um, because I work in different places. So in some of them, we were like, prepare, we're ready. We know how to do this, but our students were not. And in some others, our students were ready, but most teachers were very reluctant um, to the change. And when we started getting adapted to something, they, oh, it's emergency. Now it's, I don't know, it was, it was a roller coaster of, of emotions. It's been a, totally different year after 20 years teaching is like if I was a novice teacher. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. A friend of mine says, uh, expect everything and expect anything out of these scenarios. So yeah. let me open the Mentimeter here. That is Ajala 2015, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Alrighty. So um, let me hit on on the Mentimeter, and then if you click, uh, right, if you're already in, you will find the first question, which is uh, briefly describe your experience during remote teaching times. Um, please let us know with a reaction or in the chat box if you could access the Mentimeter and if it is working properly for you. Yes, it's working. It's working. Awesome, thank you very much. All right, so meanwhile, we get more reactions. I would like to welcome people in the audience. So Adriana, of course, Jairo, Adriana Sanchez, um, Lina Maria Perdomo, Alice from uh, Alice from Santa Marta, Buritica. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Carlo Granados from Monica, Carolina Rodriguez, welcome. Evelyn, Cristina, thank you very much for joining us. Fabian Hamilton, Jasmine Alfonso from Monica as well. Jose Humberto, uh, Juanina, okay, since I'm missing a few uh, still, um, Katie Ramirez as well, Leslie Leiva from Neiva, if I'm not mistaken, Luis Borges, uh, Rocio, Rocio Maigualca, all right, Jesenia Montoya, uh, Claudia Camila Coronado, all right, uh, Jenny Betancourt, Juan Carlos Vargas Madmilan. Uh, well, I don't want to miss Maria Elena Grazini from, from Venezuela. Well, we have lots of uh, familiar faces and new faces as well. I, I, and I'm really thankful for, for, for your attendance here. I hope, I hope it pays the ticket. All right, let's see. <laughs> Uh, for the ones I missed, my apologies, but perhaps I, I went too fast through the through the list. We have 34 attendees. 
So um, we have, it was a roller coaster and I had a really dark moments, but also very enlightening ones. I am very grateful for my experience and I feel I got a look at uh, students with different eyes too. <gasps> what a transformational experience, isn't it? It has been difficult because we have to adapt to um, a new reality, but there are some advantages as being in contact with others easily, right? Uh, pros and cons. I've learned a lot about myself as a teacher and it has been great space for growth and joy. Wow, joy, you, you even found joy in the, in the virtuality and remote teaching. That is really interesting. All right, uh, we have one more over here. It says, I learned many things about using technology, but also my workload increased probably twice than when I was in the university. <gasps> Absolutely. We all got surprised though, and, and I guess nobody was the exception. Me, myself, found myself like lesson planning to in the morning, finding new tech tools in the beginning of the pandemic. So it was crazy, my friends. So I guess we all have interesting words to, to describe our experiences. And then uh, we can even fill in journals and journals in in bringing these words into life and then uh, but this is how perhaps we connect the dots and how we uh, look backwards and perhaps see the journey we have gone through that's why it's so important to start with this it's been a big challenge i learned how to plan different interactive activities with fun digital tools have you noticed that we all talk about digital tools and technology and learning? And that was what in the beginning took most of our attention and most of our energy. Uh, however, very soon we realized that the tech tools was not the magic trick. The magic trick was ourselves. Like pedagogy was the one that ruled the learning. So that's what we discovered where I work at, at Unica. We found out like we went really fast into like learning about tools and everything and it was enlightening and everything. But soon we realized that what had to direct our actions was pedagogy. And that was like perhaps what you guys also found out. So um, I have another question, uh, which, okay, let me see if we can, All right, so now this question is more about like, okay, your experience, all right, but now that you come back, all right, so there's something funny with the, <laughs> with the Mentimeter, but let's perhaps use this chat box. How do you feel in one word coming back to the classroom? Tell us with one word in the chat box very briefly, how do you feel? Let me give you some ideas. Excited, thrilled, challenged, all right, then uh, we got voiceless, says Adriana Sanchez. Let's see what else. In my case, well, mixed feelings, <laughs> but mainly challenge. Challenge is the one I feel is, is the most relevant to me. Okay, let's see. Challenge, Lina Maria Perdomo feels challenge as well. That's right, thank you, Lina. Misael feels great and Jorge Humberto feels kind of reluctant. We all do after all, right? Maybe you've heard about this syndrome like Stockholm syndrome, like you feel like, or the cottage syndrome better. It's like, you don't wanna leave home. You wanna stay here. It's a safe space. And then, uh, <laughs> and then you will totally feel like that. You don't feel like you wanna go out any longer. Uh, Anxious, it's a big challenge, says Alice. Absolutely, Alice, I feel we, we are connected. Jose Humberto says, yes, totally. Anxious, Mariana as well. Yes, lots of feelings, lots of mixed feelings, but I guess it is important. And now in the, let's say, in agreement with the modern trends in education, we are teaching in and social emotional learning, we are teaching students to identify their own emotions. And then we are the biggest model, we are the, the, the rule model. And perhaps uh, it is us who wants to, who need to perhaps first learn to understand our emotions and our feelings. So that's why uh, this is so important. Today we are having a, a walk through the whole, let's say, narrative of my COVID journey. I decided to call this my COVID journey and, and, and then how, where you are, uh, like try to, let's say, manage 
all these emotions that have a raise, have risen, but also look forward and see what's going on. We are going to finish giving a, a look at the future. I couldn't do this myself alone, so I do believe in the power of cooperation. So I just contacted a couple of friends who 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 were really kind and helped me up uh, very. Uh, very kindly, like giving us their insights. So I wanted to know what other people think out there about this change and about coming back to the classroom. So these three wonderful people you see on screen uh, will be accompanying us today, at least virtually uh, through videos. And let's have our first guest who is Ricardo Romero, you probably are familiar with, okay? And Ricardo is telling us about how he has this as a as a social love, how he visualizes this phenomenon as a social love, lab. Okay, so uh, please bear with me. Uh, it's just an excerpt of the interview. It's not the entire interview, but this will do uh, for our purpose. They can learn about terms we were. Sorry, that is so important in communities nowadays. Now, as for your second question, are we going back to where we were? Uh, teachers who were uh, using traditional approaches to education and were controlling everything uh, had to face another reality that students were doing exactly what they thought they should be doing. No more and no less. In many cases, many students lost interest because there was nothing in it for them. It has been an incredible learning experience so that we understand that what we do can be motivating, interesting, etc. But if it is not centered on and based on the students' needs and realities and interests, there is not going to be much participation on the part of the students. Your third question was what practices will evolve or remain after the, the, the lockdown? COVID-19 has allowed us to identify what works and what doesn't work in education. There will be some things that should remain the same. And it is, for example, face-to-face -face interaction as a very important moment for students learning and for generating the social connections that are so badly needed at this time. We also understand that even though there are dangers involved in going back to the classrooms, the psychological um, aspects that are involved in the students' interactions need to be developed. But most importantly, uh, what we see now, we had at the beginning, what is important, what is necessary, what is relevant for the students will remain the same. And those questions basically take us to considering the importance of student as the center of the learning process, of reviewing our roles, for example, in language teaching as the knowledge possessors and turning into a more interesting active role of mediating between the students and the content, helping them to be critical learners and critical thinkers so that they can also filter and decide what information of the thousands of things that they found on the internet can be valuable and important and relevant for them. How many of those uh, pieces of information are true? What is the quality and of the sources and the origin of that? What is the intention behind the things that they are trying to say? So you probably agree with Ricardo in the fact that uh, this is a social lab and this is, let's say, how we discover ourselves and how uh, how we navigate in learning into making of this a better experience, ultimately to the learners, ultimately to our students, and how our practice will get stronger. And if you ask me, his point of view is very optimistic as well as mine. So your first question. Uh, so. What is the journey I'm talking about? And what is this journey, uh, let's say, probably in the beginning of the uh, of, of the session today, you were listening in the background, David Bowie with his song Heroes. And that is perhaps, it has a reason. It's perhaps because we teachers like to think of ourselves as heroes, but not this hero with superpowers or this, this Disney or Marvel hero, hero, which is like a Newton or anything, but it's just the, regular person who found out he or she was a hero, all right? That could be you, and that's me, of course, all right? So Joseph Campbell, tell us, excuse me, Joseph Campbell, it this tell us about how the narrative of the hero 
describes a journey and this is common in a lot of epic stories and a lot of, a lot of movies which we see along uh, along the along this experience today okay but then jeff johnson also tells us like the best journey answers questions that in the beginning you didn't even think to ask um let me tell you my experience very briefly um Back in Unica, we were even even though we believe in high standards, and even though we are we like to have uh, really qualified teachers on and top notch lessons, uh, we were we were really uh, this change represented a big challenge. And then the questions we got to ask during this pandemic and during this transformational period managed to transform the whole uh, understanding of of the whole understanding of education, the whole understanding of student as the center of the process, and the whole understanding of the need of teachers, let's say, centeredness within the classroom. And then we are still wondering a lot of things, but uh, I think it, it was worth the, the, it was worth the, the plunge, so to speak. What Joseph Campbell is telling us about this narrative and the the hero's journey is like, think of yourself as a person, a regular person who one day uh, had a call to adventure. And then this call to adventure was, guess what, pandemics. And then it was not really a nice call. It was not whether you want to do it or not. It's you all, you all, I remember being at the teacher's lounge and then the president of the university telling us like, you need to go virtual as of next week or tomorrow it was it was crazy we didn't know what to do it was like it raised a lot of anxiety there was a lot of denial and refusal of course because we were panicked we didn't know how to get how, how to get to virtual lessons we had had some experiences in the past not all of us though all right but then uh, there was some kind of refusal okay what I want you to notice, we are not going into the, the, the nine or 12 different steps that Campbell describes here, but what we are, what I want you to notice and look at is that the hero starts in the beginning being a regular person, so to speak, being, um, okay, so being a, a, an ordinary person in an ordinary world who gets a call for something wonderful, for something amazing. And then along this, along his adventure, he's going to have a lot of new things and then crossing the mentor, like meeting somebody. I guess you all did along the way, this person who was beside you telling you like, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? We all did this in a way. And then there was the webinar boom, Eventually, everybody was making webinars and everybody was sharing their knowledge and everybody wanted to share because we were there to help. We, 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 we teachers love that. This is who we are. And then our identity is help. And then we were there mentoring each other, helping one another. And that was the magic part of it. Like once again, cooperation emerged, all right? And then in the way you find allies and enemies, we find all these tech tools, we find all these uh, difficult students, uh, I personally had students with zero or no connectivity, like who live in an island, Tierra Bomba Island, imagine this. So uh, then we all had to fight these uh, awkward scenarios and difficulties. And then uh, a lot of things happened along the way, late nights, early mornings, webinars, uh, online quizzes. And then eventually we started thinking that we could master it and, and we got better and better at this. And the good thing was like, we already were feeling comfortable and guess what? We are, we have now the call to come back and you say like, now you got hybrid and then you're gonna have some students online and some students in the classroom. So we say, no, so the loop goes back and forth, right? Maybe you feel that way too. Hmm? But the good thing about this narrative or the good thing is that the hero acquires the knowledge that he didn't have before. And the hero now gets a token, uh, gets a special knowledge, and the hero returns. If you can see the in the in the uh, in the in the end of the process, all right? The the hero gets back home, and this is probably us getting back to the classroom, but not exactly in the same position we were. 
not exactly the ordinary teacher who had like who managed to have very orthodox practices but a teacher with renewed knowledge a teacher with a wider repertoire of abilities and skills of passions and then with new questions and new concerns and with new life basically what this has provided us with his life the willingness to uh, have inquiry and to go ahead and find out what's next and this is what we live on after all isn't it why are we telling you or, or what am i telling you all this because we can connect the dots forward as jo steve jobs said perhaps uh, a year ago uh, we could not really know what, where this was all going to take us. We were really uncertain about coming back to the classroom. But now that we are about to come back, and in some cases, I know some of you are already in the classroom, uh, you can look back and say, you know, I learned so much during this experience, and I tried so hard, and I made it. Um, I looked for help, and I found that. And there was this crisis, and I overcame this. And I was sick, perhaps some of you were sick, like me, I had, I got coronavirus twice. And then, uh, but I found a lot of help in my coworkers and I found a lot of help in my students. That was my motivation to turn on the camera and, and, and then sit down there. It was my motivation because that's what we live on after all, isn't it? Okay. Now, uh, let's see what our Brazilian friend tells us about the same question. Simon, I asked her, are we coming back to where we were? Are we coming back to where we were, where we come from? Let's see what she has to say. Ourselves, because this is not something that's not so common and it's not something that it's not so easy to do okay and after that there was another question are we going to get back to where we were no we're not which is good because we have learned lots of things we have learned how to stay home we have learned how to deal with our problems I remember one day I was talking to Hamis in the beginning uh, of uh, this pandemic moment and we were discussing uh, the possibilities of to always have uh, things inside that we need to deal with. So when we used to go out to work more, so we had the opportunity of looking to ourselves more deeply. We had the opportunity of looking to our family, of looking to the people who work with us. In a way, you are in my house now because I'm doing this video and we are going to be part of a webinar. But look where I am in my house. Pay attention to the clothes I am wearing. So I am the academic director, but now I'm home office. It's cold here in Brazil and I'm totally uh, wearing sports clothes. This is possible and it doesn't make me a different professional or it doesn't uh, diminish the quality of my work because I'm home and uh, I am wearing a home office, let's say clothes. So we're not going to be the same and here about the practices. I think that we are going to use technology. Technology has an important role. I've been dealing with technology, so it's been more than 20 years that I work with uh, distance education. And uh, for me, it was kind of a dream, not this moment, but a kind of a dream that people would, in a forced way, unfortunately, but that people would leave technology and understand the benefits of technology. So I say teamwork, yes, it's essential and it's necessary. And new practices, practices that we have learned from this pandemic moment that transformed us into better professionals for sure and into better people too. And the practices using technology, we are not going to be 
the same. So uh, I hope that uh, I have uh, collaborated with you and uh, I would like to finish my small talk saying that uh, it was a pleasure to be here with you and to believe me, we are getting better and we are doing great. Let's use technology. Let's change our practices. Let's look to people, understand, cope with and find solution and make our place for sure a better world. Thank you so much. So I'm here in Brazil. If you need anything, Hamas know how to contact me. So it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Right. And I guess we all agree with Simone in the fact that this gave us, this experience gave us the opportunity to get to know students in ways that we never thought before. So we had access to their more intimate space, which is their houses, and then uh, interacting with their families. And probably many times you could see their families in the background, their pets, they managed to get to, to know your pets. I, I own two cats and eventually they would jump I'm surprised today they haven't done it. All right, they wouldn't jab in front of the screen and it was kind of like getting to know your teacher at a different level and getting to see the human being uh, behind that, that the, the professor's uh, attire or the professor's look. And also like uh, that is the token, that is the, that is the superpower we gain along this journey, which is having a good command or a more, let's say effective command of technology. We are more knowledgeable now. now. We know how to design an online quiz and not to spend hours and hours marking it, but now it can be marked online. Now we know how to have everybody participate through a Google document and everybody having a voice in, in the classroom without letting anybody behind and trying to, and, and, and accepting everybody's points of view and everybody's voice, at least in a document or somehow. Now we know a lot of things and now we have a lot of superpowers that I am sure a new reality is not going to leave behind. So the Hero Jones journey proposes three stages. First, the ordinary world, as you know, before the, before the pandemics, we had like a very sad reality. We were really uh, happy about being there. We were quite knowledgeable. Many of us had like, many of us had like a very, let's say complete, um, let's say folder of lesson plans with lots of uh, photocopies and nice activities. And we knew that with this beautiful poster making session will be great for this activity. And then here I would have a wonderful role play. And now I would play uh, a, a, a race. And then, uh, yes, that was great. We were somehow in the comfort zone. All right. Although we never have with teachers, uh, we teachers are always looking for challenges in a way. But then we move on. We are forced to move into this special world. And this special world is telling us like, oh, OK, there's a lot of challenges. There's a lot of threats. There's a lot of difficulties that you have to that you have to overcome and we did we did greatly teachers and i would like to congratulate you because you managed to keep all these students motivated and you managed to keep all these students wanting more all right and many of your students got surprised at the fact that yes it can be done online yes it can be with same with the same similar or same quality as it was before and of course uh, and of course, nothing, nothing is too much to, for us, so to speak. But then we're coming back to the ordinary world. And I think it would be too boring to us going back to where we were because it is like the restoration as, 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 um, um, as our authors now, all right? So we return with the elixir. And what is this elixir? What is this magic formula that is going, oh, talking about magic formula, <laughs> I have a surprise for you. Please stay tuned. By the end of the se session, you will, be, you will get a surprise. Uh, you will like it, all right? What is this magic formula that you are showing the world, that you're showing your students, that you're bringing with you because you are a mighty teacher with a new superpower? right i don't think we're getting back to where we were i agree with ricardo and i agree with simon but what about you teachers who are you think about these two scenarios 
the teacher A would set up like, let's say, uh, utterances, right? Who goes back in the classroom, of course, very excited and saying, yeah, it was about time I was fed up with this freaking pandemic. And then uh, I'll finally be able to make my poster session again and students coloring and, and mandalas and things like that. And then this night it's, it's over. So I'm just going to put this in a drawer and forget about this and hoping that, that this will never happen again. Or are you teacher B? Are you this teacher who is wondering or who is looking up for inquiry? Like, what is next? What is my next challenge? Now I have this elixir. Now I have this superpower, but what's next? What can I do with this? I'm not going to put this under, uh, under a desk, all right? Nobody lights a candle to put it under a desk, to put it under a table. The candles are lit to put upon and shine. And you just have lit the candle. You just have been given a power that you cannot deny, that you have to live with, and you have to use in behalf of, on behalf of your students' welfare and on behalf of our, our, our well-doing, don't you think? It's time to go creative, teachers. It's time to move forward. It's time to, it's time to look for different practices that go beyond uh, what we were doing before. It's perhaps challenging. And yes, it, this is going to take a lot of our time and this is going to take a lot of our energy. But let's remember, we are not alone. And the power of cooperation once again emerges as a human trait that has guided our profession for centuries and centuries. And then together we can bridge this uh, dart and we can definitely move forward finding a solution to hybrid learning. I am not for sure we cannot have all our students back. Back in my personal case in Unica, I cannot bring or, or we cannot bring our, our students back in Bogota because they are living all over Colombia and we have lots of students out there. Eventually they will come, but perhaps this is not the time. Um, we will need to find a way to, to bring them here virtually, but still take care of those who want to be in the classroom. So it's time to take this new challenge. Yes, I have my superpower. Now I need to use it in two different ways. I need to blend this previous knowledge I had before my trip, which I was a very effective classroom teacher. And then I became a very effective online teacher and put them to both together. And now the hybrid classroom, you need to, I need to shine by myself, but to make my students shine in this context. Mm -hmm. Our friend Carrie Ann Frackleton from Jamaica is giving us, is inviting us to giving up the resistance. Let's see what she has to say. Played a major role in how students have been learning and in the classroom experiences during this pandemic. Do I believe we're going to go back to where we are coming from? Definitely not. I certainly hope not. What we considered the normal prior to this pandemic was clearly something that did not allow us to evolve through technology and through all the potential that we could possibly have to have our learning experiences expanded and ensure that all students were able to enjoy the fruit of what took place in the classroom. Our teachers were also challenged to change. And in changing, in, in, in fighting the change initially, but eventually giving up the resistance and ensuring that the students, um, the students benefited, we found that our teachers learned as well. So now a lot of learning has taken place and it would be, a, it would be terrible for us to go back to where we're coming from without taking many of the lessons with us. In future, what do I think we are going to take with us? New communication styles, of course, and definitely teamwork, learning to work together more, not just in the classroom at the primary and secondary and even tertiary levels, but also in our society, working together for the greater good of everyone, understanding the importance of understanding other people's views, as well as learning to depend on others 
in times when we are incapable of providing certain things for ourselves. Many times we found in the classrooms here in Jamaica that some students did not have access to the internet and they would have depended on other students whose homes they could go to to utilize the internet, to be in the classroom with everyone else. So we understood that teamwork was what brought us to where we are today. We appreciate it more, and I certainly hope we don't forget the importance of it as we move forward. Let us pack our suitcases with communication, collaboration, and ensure that the future is way better than the past, as well as what is going on currently in the present. I ask you all to stay safe, and I thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Once again, you see, we're not alone. We were not the only one faces issues of students with zero or no connectivity. But then out there, there are people who have found wonderful ways to, to get across uh, or to, to bridge the, those difficulties or to overcome these problems, right? And then magically or somehow, cooperation has been the key word, working together, learning together, and giving up the resistance of, uh, let's say, going back to where we were or staying where we are. That is the status quo everyone. Teachers, I want you to think about your change. I want you to think about this journey, your own journey, your own personal journey, which I know has been long. I know has been difficult. In some cases, it has been painful because some of us have lost relatives along the way. Some of us have lost jobs or part-time jobs out of it. Oh, I'm sorry, my mic was off. Um, where was, uh, I, I don't know how much of, of this uh, went through. It was, it was off just for a couple of seconds, don't worry. Oh, okay, great. So thinking about your own, thinking about your own process or thinking about your own change and along this journey, which merges everything, is not only our daily basis or our daily work, but it's also our personal life. It's also our emotions. It's, all, it's also our expectations and also our own perception, our self image that has converged into a big change that has generated this pandemic. And of course, this is going to filter down within our classrooms. Of course, this is going to show us or give us a new version of who I am and where I am going as an educator. I want you to think the model that describes your change. Is this a 360 change? Is this a 180 degrees change? Or this is a spiral change? I don't know if you, if you wanna use the chat box or anybody wants to open the microphone and tell us like how you feel about it. I don't know if, the, if, if this can be done, but. <laughs> sure. Come on teachers, don't be shy. So we have three models here and we have three options like my change is a 300 degree at 60 degree it means that you turn around all right and you go back to where you were all right ready to move on 180 you return you go back all right but then spiral describes something different spirals is yes i am really close to where i was at the beginning i am really i'm coming back to the classroom but not, I'm not exactly the same person who I was a year ago or a year and a half ago, because I now have this knowledge. I now have this vision of myself. I have now this vision of learning and teaching. Adriana, what can you tell us about yourself? Mm, I was just writing that I hope it's a spiral because um, of course I cannot be the same person that I was a year ago. I cannot say that I changed totally because I think that in essence, I, I really try to keep my students safe and I really try to keep my students learning, yeah? Um, but I also realized that even when I've been like very academic in terms of, of what my students need to learn, I also learned so many things from their personal lives and the, the way they felt and the way I felt uh, with all what happened in my family and in my job and everything. 
that I don't feel that I can say I'm a totally different person. No, I think that I need to build on, on who I was, take the good things, take the bad things as well, and, and build myself to this new, nothing is going to be as it, as it used to be. I think, I hope I can be a spiral. Jose Humberto, what do you want to tell us? Share. Hello. Well, I, I was going to say something very, um, very similar to what you said. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Loud and clear. Okay. Um, because I mean, we have this idea of we would like to be spiral, but we we sort of never know how things will, um, happen once we face that situation, right? So. I think that it's very like we have an expectation right now. I, I don't feel I'm the same teacher. I don't feel I'm the same person. But um, I think we will still face like demons and vices of like traditional or, or how it was a year and a half ago that we also have to face and confront and overcome w once we go back. I haven't been back to the classroom. I think it will happen soon for me but but yeah uh, I, I'm very like um, I, I agree with Adriana a lot to how it would be for me. Thank you very much that was quite interesting anybody else would like to? Leslie join us. Leslie. Good afternoon James. Hello Leslie. Um, Listen, listen to you, I motivate to change 180 grades. Um, so you feel I, you're totally I have, I, Yeah? You feel you're totally different? I, I will have, I, I, I have to vision in our profession. Uh, Absolutely, the technology coming in our lives, lives. So I am growing in this. Okay, the thing with 180 is like you're going back to where we were, and there's nothing wrong with that as long as we are, are as well, long as we have clarity and that's what we need and what we want. So thank you, thank you, Leslie, for for bringing it up to discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In the in the chat, Alicia is sharing that. She's, lo she's losing her educational power because of the lack of public resources. And um, I know that I, I, I have also talked to other colleagues how, yes, the, the, the COVID is kind of our ocean, but we, we're in the same ocean, but we are swimming in different ways, no? If you know how to swim is one thing. If you have a boat, if you have a yacht, yeah? If somebody comes and rescue you in a, in a head, Um, and I understand that, for example, there are many teachers that are doing whatever they can without any resource. Um, and how can we envision our teaching beyond the, those resources? I mean, because it's, it's history for teachers that we do what we can with, with whatever we have available. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, Juliana is saying in the chat box that that she would like to go spiral. Juliana, would you like to elaborate a little bit on it? Hi, James. Yes, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I believe that I have learned a lot during this year and a half that I have implemented new strategies. And I think this is a great opportunity to, to um, embrace the fact that we cannot go back to the, to the way that we uh, thought before so uh, we need to start like um, I don't know like always trying to find ways to connect and, and create community with our with our students so I believe that I'm going to to have a different perspective in the way that I had um, my classes before thank you a new and improved way. Thank you very much, Juliana. Claudia Camila says, it is interesting to see how we have evolved. Uh, I feel that my methodology, the way how I teach, the way I talk to my students, how I explain the topics have changed. Would you like to tell us a little bit more, Claudia? Or, or somebody feels the same way? Um, okay. I am at the university. 
I don't know if you can see me. Okay, of course that everything has changed for me because uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, I didn't know how to teach virtually. For me, it was awful. I remember that I didn't sleep the previous night. Oh my God, I had to learn how to use the different tools. I mean, uh, how to create a Kahoot, a quizzes, because all the time I was in the class doing activities in the classroom. I love to do, to implement games, but in the classroom. But when I have to face this reality, oh my God, it was uh, shocking for me because I have to learn many things. Now for me, it's easier if I have in a virtual class than in the real class. Because for me, it's better to have a, digital resources. I work in a, in a private university. So we are, work, we are working in a hybrid uh, metodo mixto, hybrid. And I have students in the classroom and at the same time they are connected. Some other students are connected through Meet. So I have to pay attention to both groups at the same time. So, it's hard, but I have learned. I have, I said that I have evolved because now I am able to do activities in the virtual classroom and in the real one at the same time. So I think it, it's amazing, it was shocking, but I grew up and I have learned a lot from that experience. Wow, and, and now that you're back in the classroom, what was your first call? How do you feel the moment? I, I, I dream about that moment. How do you feel when you step into your classroom? Well, it was difficult because we're actually I'm in the classroom. And here at the university have been implemented uh, cameras. I don't know if you can see it. Classrooms, the computer. So I have to learn again <laughs> to use the tools from the university, not only from my computer, but also the tools from the university, what they provide us. So again, it was shocking, but it was really interesting because it's, it's, it's cool to know that uh, the principal um, was worried about how we, can, how we teach to our students. So the main idea was to continue with the students. So that's why uh, they implement those tools. And here we are in the, uh, in the hybrid method. And it's been, sometimes it's hard, it's hard. I'm not going to, to lie to you because sometimes, he, I live here in Villavicencio, Colombia, and it rains all the time. So while we have here, connected my students who are not in the in the university they say they text me through whatsapp professor sorry but i won't be able to be in your classroom because today is raining or today something happened with the internet connection that's right, so it's, right. it's quite difficult thank yeah. you claudia for for showing us around that was beautiful and, and really nice of you kiss your heart and then you're not alone uh, we are here for you, and I am pretty sure many more webinars will come about the hybrid system and about like how to adapt and how to endure. And you're there in the loop. You're in the spiral. A better Claudia, a better Jose, a better Alicia, a better Jairo. And then we are getting there. Our time is coming to an end. All right. But as I promised, I had a surprise for you. All right. So um, how many of you teachers and now it comes comes the time to <laughs> for some propaganda, <laughs> some commercials. Uh, how many of you feel that you would like to improve your intonation patterns? How many of you feel that sometimes you get stuck with your English? And then uh, you, you, you wish you could talk about different topics, not only the ones you use in class. How many of you wish you could talk to other grown-ups about relaxed topics uh, with a glass of wine? I guess many of you. So we have a magic formula for you. This is, that, this is a teacher's club uh, in which you will be able to develop all the things that I just mentioned and a lot more. So the raffle today 
uh, the surprise that we are bringing for you is one pass to this teacher's club. So you will be able to join this club, all right, for, for uh, join this club for free, okay? Uh, I think it's like for a month for sessions or, or I think they have two weekly sessions. But uh, yes, one of you will be winning this pass, this free pass, all right? Um, but for, don't be sad. If you don't win, you can contact them in social networks, add them in Instagram. And if you tell my name, yeah, they will get you some discount, okay? You say, I was on the Asocopy webinar with Hamas, and then you will be given some discount. Uh, we so give the wine for the conversation. <laughs> Why not? All right. So um, wait, we would like to to honor your punctuality. So we're going to be asking a question about the video that Asokopi shared in the beginning. All right. Uh, of course, Asokopi members, the board of directors, unfortunately cannot participate <laughs> in this raffle. Okay. So only if you're not part of the board of directors, you can answer the question Adriana is about to ask. I don't know what it is. All right, so Adriana, you and the what will be the rules for the raffle? First. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to ask you um, a question and we're going to ask all of you, we're going to do it as a waterfall, like it's called a water chat. We want you to write the answer, but don't send the answer. You're going to write the answer in the chat and don't send it yet. Just write it there. When we say go, everybody sends. And the fifth correct answer, the fifth is going to be the winner. This is exciting. Okay, so we don't know which it is yet. So remember, right? no as a copy I'm gonna, board of I'm directors. Gonna, no, no, you took me out of the competition and I love competition, but well. Uh, okay, no, okay. So we're going to do it. I'm gonna say that again, okay? I, I'm gonna ask a question and you guys are going to write the answer and not send it to the chat, okay? You're going to write it in the chat, but you're not going to send it until I say go, all right? Which is the date for our national and international conference this year? Which is the date for our national and international conference this year, write it, but don't send it. Don't send. One, two, three, go. Go, the fifth one. All right, Gerli, October 13 and 14. You were the first one, good. Misael, October 13. Aleida, October 14. That is the third one. Come on, guys, you have to send it. <laughs> I don't think we will. Want. Okay, no, we will have to change it. And Mariana change the Caro. One, two, three. And then. One, two, three, four, five. That's not it... fair, it says Misael. Yeah, Misael, you're right, I'm sorry. I don't know. This is Jose Humberto. Well, know. actually, the, actually, so far, so far, the next one. Nobody will be the, has answered correctly. No. Oh, really? Yeah, nobody wow. has answered correctly. You're missing some days. You're missing some days. You're missing some days. Oh. So let let let's say the first one that has the correct answer. Then the first one who has the correct answer. Come on. Which are which is the date for our national and international conference this year? Jairo Castañeda says four days, guys. It's four days. So the first correct answer will be the winner. Win this pass. The this is very expensive. Answer. Believe me. Okay. It is. A, <laughs> all right. The clue Jairo is giving us four days. Is that your close? Come on. Try, four try. Days. Okay. Clara. Clara Litera says, Close, October Clara, 14, one day. 14 to 16. 14, 15, 16. <laughs> Misael, 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 life is fair. Yes, remember that our annual conference this year is going to be held between October the 13th and the 16th. You guys can check in your registration. No, when you get the, when you register, I hope everybody's registering by now. So you will be receiving the, 
the, um, the mail with the dates. We are going to have sessions starting on October the 13th because we are going to have special sessions with our national and international speakers. So go to asocopy.com and Misael, please uh, send us in a private message all your information so we can contact you after the webinar, okay? You can yes. send it to me or to Hamis. Yes, we'll need your full name, um, email address, cell phone number. I think that should be it. All right. Uh, well, and our time has come to an end. Time to fly. Um, well, this oh, prize is just a much. token of gratitude. Thank you very much. All right. And I hope you all are in the loop. And for closing, and uh, last but not least, we want to share with you, remember that we are having our meet and greet sessions with uh, some of the authors of the special edition of How. Uh, for this um, special edition, we have had uh, some of the most published or, or, or well-known uh, academics in our field. And uh, our next meet and greet is going to, the, the second session is going to be held on September the 9th at 5 p.m. We're going to be meeting with Frank Giraldo and Jairo Castañeda. They are both around for a very nice talk and a, a very nice meet and greet. For more information, please go to our patient, asocopi.org. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for this special time together and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you,